and the sabr that you implement starting on your belief of our qada or qadr it will only comes with good always inna man yattaqi wa yasbir fa inna allah la yudhi'u ajra al-muhsini so this is the third characteristic related to sunnah so when you know the sunnah of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what option you have you have only one option eat the ibadah of sabr so when you want to plan when you want to plan what you will be doing you will be training yourself how to raise the worship of sabr you facing difficulty you said i'm going to fight the difficulty i'm going to ask for help i'm going to do this and this and this with your knowledge of the sunan what the weapon that you need to be trained on is a sabr ya ayyuha alladhina amanu isbiru wa sabiru wa rabitu wa taqullah so when you include it in the sunan you know what the meaning of the sabr so the sabr is the most a great weapon to deal to have as he the characteristic when knowing the sunan of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so for example someone when he's dealing with the sunan when dealing with this he will say i will pray every day uh, uh layl, asking allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help me and to solve this what are you going to tell him to them according to the sunnah of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is not going to happen because in this particular time you need sabr if you make dua to be answered today is not going to happen so this is because of non understanding of the sunnah someone will be making dua every day and make a qiyam every day and say why is not is not the help is not coming he said because the actual worship the right worship that you need to do in this time is the sabr is the sabr yusuf alayhi salam did he hear all along his life in that period did he ask to go back to to his father and what he said in the end of story this is the exact ayah that i said is him who said it. whoever who show piety and sabr allah will not neglect the reward of those good doers therefore sometimes it depends on the action you do some people you need to stick with them to help them other you told them salam peace other you have to fight it depends on the sunnah how you understand it you might fight in a situation that the sunnah tell you don't fight then you're going to be in a very difficult situation you say yeah allah i went i did what people they call jihad he said it wasn't in the right time and it wasn't in the right place and it wasn't according to the son of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala therefore even the action of good that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gifted us it's not all of it that you put it in action you have to write to get the right action that goes with the sunnah of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that particular perspective so if you do other than sabr it's not gonna work why because the only act of worship that goes in this sunnah is the sabr innahu man yattaqi wa yasbir fa inna allah la yudhi'u ajra al-muhsini the fourth characteristic or principle dealing with the sunnah dealing with the sunan should not be by trying to hasten the result but as we said to be patient why patient on allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decree because we believe certainly that the help is coming with no doubt that the promise of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to be fulfilled but how is going to be fulfilled with Allah's timing, not your time. 
and with Allah's choice, not your choice. So this fourth principle, that your supper that you do doing is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is not waiting for things to happen, but you know that it's going to happen. So your problem that is not is going, I mean, that is going to happen or not, no. But the principle you know that if it's going, to, what is going to happen is with Allah's timing and with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala choice. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to the believer, have, enjoy the celebration of your victory. Before even it's going to happen. Why? Because you celebrate the victory by the promise of Allah, not by its happening. Because you might not be here when it's going to happen. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam promised suraqa, the siwara kisra, the bracelet of kisra, but the Prophet ﷺ didn't attend the fulfillment of that promise. It only happened after the Prophet ﷺ passed away around maybe 10 years. So the believer will celebrate it here before it happened and he celebrated when he meets Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the fourth characteristic. One of the Dara'il images from the Qur'an. يَقُولُونَ هَلْ لَنَا مِنَ الْأَمْرِ مِنْ شَيْءٍ The hypocrite among them said, Do you have anything to deal with this matter? It's like the Prophet Sallallahu is like for them, he's an enemy. He's doing everything, he's deciding everything. So Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala said, قُلْ إِنَّ الْأَمْرَ كُلَّهُ لِلَّهِ The Amr, the decree all belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The other evidence from Surah Al-Kahf. وَلَا تَقُولَنَّ لِشَيْءٍ إِنِّي فَاعِلٌ ذَلِكَ غَدًا إِلَّا أَيَّ شَاءَ اللَّهِ Don't say, I'm going to do this, I'm planning, everything is settled. Except if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills, we say, inshaAllah. وَذْكُرْ رَبَّكَ إِذَا نَسِيد So instead of doing that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directing us what to do. وَذْكُرْ رَبَّكَ إِنَا نَسِيت وَقُلْ عَسَىٰ أَنْ يَهْدِينِ رَبِّي لِأَقْرَبَ مِنْ هَذَا رَشَدًا الْأَيَةِ فِي سُرْبِ كَافِ نَمْبَرْ 24 and 23 وَلِلَّهِ الْأَمْرُ مِنْ قَبْلُ وَمِنْ بَعْدِ For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala belong the Amr from the beginning and in the end. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to the believer about the situation of the Roman, how they were defeated, and they go to have victory in a few years, to say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, everything settled in the, in the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now this is an introduction to go and we went through some principles. Uh, the sunnah, we come back after this uh, uh, introduction, what the meaning of the sunnah? What the meaning of the sunnah? As sunnah hiya al-tariqa wa sira al-muttaba'a. As sunnah is the way. In the way, followed. And the example that is followed. As in the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, قال, مَنْ سُنَّ فِي الْإِسْلَامِ سُنَّةً حَسَنَةً فَعُمِلَ بِهَا بَعْدَهُ كُتِبَ لَهُ مِثْلُ أَجْرِ مَنْ عَمِلَ بِهَا وَلَا يَنْقُصُ مِنْ أُجُورِهِمْ شَيْءٍ Whoever who start a good way in Islam, a good action to be a good example for people after, whoever who will do with that action, following the way of this person who started it, he will have reward on it. So the one who started, he will have reward without diminishing any of the reward of those who did. Someone, for example, in a town, he uh, started, he dig a well of water. And he started that so Everyone who used that well, or everyone who had the intention to find any other well to help more people, he's going to have the reward of the first one who started. Like anything in the 
make someone things easy for people in a way of life or things but that leads help in the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but also in the same thing whoever who starts a bad action a sunnah sayyah wa man sanna fi islam sunnah sayyah someone starting something bad that leads to displease Allah anyone who will do the same he will have a burden on him you know the first for example singing those sound songs of Fahisha so how many people of those singers they passed away everyone who played their song now they will add in their record say ولا يحملون أثقالهم وأثقال الذين أضلون and you know the first one who started a sunnah sayyia is Qabil by killing his brother Habil everyone in this life who kill with no right Qabil has a sin, part of that sin. Can you imagine? Because he's the first one who starts the action of killing on earth. There's, uh, we'll go to the, the categories of the Sunan. This is very important because we're going to uh, you know, go through this definition. The Sunan, we can approach them from different, from two different perspectives. The first one, looking at their categories. The second, looking at their types. So we have two categories in the Sunan and two types of Sunan. The categories of the Sunan, they are one, as sunan al kawniya the universal law of Allah. The second category are the shari'i law of Allah. The shari'i related to the sharia, related to the revelation, related to the field of the choice of the human being. So this is two categories. The first category is the universal law. The second category is the Shari law. Subhanallah, he is a big radu behind him. One Madalikatu. The types we have Sunanun Kharika was Sunanun Jeria. Sunanun Kharika, the types we have Sunanun Jeria, current normal laws. <coughs> And Surah al Kharika is miraculous or supernatural laws. We take, for example, the rising of the sun from the east. The rising of the sun from the east. It's an universal law that is Jaria, current, and obvious normal law okay is universal law the the situation of the water in the state of Musa alayhi salam when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the the sea to split into two to be two mountains the flowing of the water is a universal law the splitting of the water is a supernatural law. Khaliqah. Well, so we have the two categories. Every category can have this one of these two types. We have the category that is universal law. And we category that is shari law. And then we have the types that can be natural or supernatural uh, sunnah. What is or what are the universal law? Inshallah, I will uh, do this and we'll uh, get to a question 
if you have it. What is the universal law? This is the law of Allah that everything is submitted to it. Everything submit to this law. Willingly or unwillingly. This is Qanun Aam. In this law, the man is controlled. Musayyarun. He doesn't have the choice in this law. He doesn't have the choice. Like the disease. Like death. And he will ask, how to approach this law? Can someone, as I said earlier, can someone ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to not to die? Say, Ya Allah, la to meet me. Ya Allah. Ya Allah, all the praise I am doing for you, all the sadaqah, I'm asking you only one dua. Don't help me to die. Ya Allah. Can you do this? Ya Allah, every time I see the grave, I'm deceived, I mean, depressed, sad. Ya Allah, make me to live forever. But even when you see in some literature, those immortal, they got so uh, tired of being alive. So when you say, Allahumma la tumitni ya Allah. If you make 2,000 raka every day, will Allah accept your dua? But you know that Allah is known to accept your dua. And Allah told you, ask me and answer you. So ask me and answer you is not in the field of the universal law. Because this is, is a law that no one can do. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala قال وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعْ If my servant asks you about Allah subhanahu wa about me, I'm indeed near. I'll answer all the calls. When my servant asks me, so you say, Ya Allah, I ask you to not cause me to die. Here, your dua comes in the conflict of the universal law. Therefore, it's not that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't want to answer you, but this is outside the field and the hudud of your dua. You cannot. Even the one Shaheed Abdullah ibn Haram, when he saw Allah kifahan without a curtain, the one who was shaheed in Ghazwat Uhud, he said, ask anything. He said, yeah, Allah, I want, go, I want to go back to the dunya to fight again and die in your sake. He said, no. The law he has for Abdullah ibn Haram, but this is universal law. No one can break it. No one. So that's why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he corrected our aqeedah. When Ibrahim, his son, passed away and an eclipse happened, they said this is because of the death of Ibrahim. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came out to give them a speech. He said, no, don't say this. الشَّمْسُ وَالْقَمَرُ آيَتَانِ مِنْ آيَةِ الرَّحْمَانِ This is are signs of Allah. Those that are submitted to the universal law. لا يكسفاني أو لا يخسفاني لموت أحد. They don't eclipse to the death of anyone. That's a system outside of your choice. We are all submitted to it. And you cannot break it. And you cannot plan based on it. And you cannot base a plan that Allah will cause to help, help you or make you have a miracle. To break it. It doesn't work. That's why the believer, based on this, he's very, in a way, realistic. 
really. We don't base our choice on miracle. We don't base our plan of da'wah on supernatural thing. And that's why the Prophet sallallahu based on this. When he went to the hijrah, he took all the hardship to be an example for us. He didn't take the, didn't take the buraq to fly to Medina. He traveled walking sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because this deen is real. It's not a miracle. It's not a question about supernatural. You need to act. And act and act and act. When you come to the limit, you still require to have the sabr and the yaqeen. Because if you lose the sabr and yaqeen, at that moment, you lose the result of the sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you cannot break the law. You cannot say, Ya Allah, like many people, they come in a way of worship. And they have their connection of Allah like more emotional connection without understanding the sunnah. So they will start to innovate many things in the deen. And their innovation that they think that they can break the law, the universal law. Why? Because they are so special. No one is special. And we want to give example here. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, You're going to die and everyone is going to die. كُلُّ مَنْ عَلَيْهَا فَانْ وَيَبْقَ وَجْهُ رَبِّكَ ذُو الْجَلَالُ إِكْرَامُ Everything is going to perish. So you cannot ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is His law, and to feel like you are special. There is no special. This is actually contradicting and enrolling yourself because you're making yourself believe something that you cannot attain it and it's not part of us. It's like someone making dua to fly. Your structure will not help you to fly. But look, the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He didn't make the purpose of your life or the result of your life related to these things. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answered your dua to not to die, if this is going to help you in the day of judgment or to change anything, it will not. Therefore, the dua, when you get it in the, according to the sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you'll find yourself focused and you find yourself on the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when you know this is a universal law, don't fight it. Submit to it and plan according to it. So once I want people, I'll explain to you one time, and I mentioned this before. One uh, sheikh from Nigeria, he was uh, writing his PhD. And his PhD talking about, uh, you know, the different sects in Islam and everything. And he make like a real example. He called the chief of tribes uh, around in his uh, state. And there were among them a lot of, you know, Sufi. And they told them, I have a great request from you. I have a request from you. After he offered them dinner and everything, and those are big shiuk, people are known, people, you know, they are like, uh, everyone go visit them for uh, blessing, and you know, Africa, our way over there. Tight. He said, he brought like a big jar in the middle, he hang it, and it's full of water. He said, I have one request from you. If there's anyone who is so close to Allah to make dua for this jar to break. They said, easy. Okay. So what they said, do you need anything? He said, just dim the light. You know. And everyone started to make dua. Ya Allah, the jar. Ya Allah, send thunder on the jar. The other, ya Allah. And he said, like, he's narrating in his uh, thesis. He said, we've been hearing people screaming from, you know, from crying. And tears. <laughs> ya Allah, ya Allah, like... Hey, this is, I mean, do you think it's going to work? <laughs> After an hour, he turned on back the light, the jar is still safe as is. Strong, there. The dua didn't work. So he took a stick and he hit the jar, he broke it. 
See, that's how to break it. <laughs> Action. You take the sabab. Don't come in a distance and have like the whole ground around you wet with your tears for it to break. That's not the way. So if the taqwa in his heart and the warm tears he had helped him to do this action? No. Why? Because he's broke a son of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, if you wanted to break it, go hit it. Say, Bismillah, you're going to break. But going in a distance to have it like with all this, you know, psycho, what they call it, to break it, it would not. That's the son of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's how the deen is real. It's not an imagination, it's not an illusion, it's not a miracle. And this is the Sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then, uh, maybe if you want, we open. If not, we'll start a Sunnah Shariah and the meaning of the Sunnah Shariah, which is the most Sunnah that is close to us because it's very complex, the Sunnah of a shari, the sunnah within the field of our action, the field of our choice. I will give the definition and we'll continue it inshallah next time. Is the way followed in dealing with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your relation, the relation of the servant with Allah. So the way followed in the relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The way followed in the relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This relation concern the behavior, the action, and the belief. Behavior, action, and belief. According to the revelation of Allah. So is the way followed in the relation of Allah, in the relation with Allah, and that considering his action, his behavior, and his belief. And this is the action, behavior, and the belief how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala set it or revealed in His Sharia. Whatever you act, the way you act, that define a relation between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That relation will have as a result in the dunya and in the akhirah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told you the rightest action lead you to be a friend to me and lead you to have joy in the dunya and happiness in the akhirah. It depends on your relation with Allah. This is your choice. This is the field of your choice. And you are settled by Sunan Ilahi. It's not, it's not like choose, pick and choose. It's Sunnah Ilahi. It's very strict. That's why, based on this, the result of your life, what happened to you in your life, depends on your position, your position toward Allah. Your position toward Allah define and decide of all your result in this dunya and the akhirah. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what he will say? بَلِ الْإِنسَانُ عَلَى نَفْسِهِ بَصِيرًا وَلَوْ أَلْقَى مَهَابِرًا الْإِنسَانُ عَلَى نَفْسِهِ You are alone, you know already, you see yourself, you have a clear vision. Don't throw your excuses in the Day of Judgment. You already decide yourself on what position you position yourself toward Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And based on that position, you earn what you earn, and you get what you get. This is the Sunnah Shari.
I'll stop here with the land. If you have any question, we continue with the land next time with this Sunan Ashari. Any question? The universal laws are within the Sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? The category of the Sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes exceptions to those laws. For example, fire burns, but you know, in certain cases the fire does not burn. Um, the, what you told us right now, that the shiuk means dua, but sometimes these dua are accepted and Allah wills them. Does that also fall within the Sunnah? For example, like Sulaiman al no. having command of jinn and, and and talking to them. That's an exception. Well, this. the exception, that's what we call the types of the sunan. We have natural sunan and we said supernatural sunan. That's the exception. So the exception has a spell, has its reason, has its cause. If I get a way to find or to seek for the exception when in my way I already broke one of the law, it will not work. So in this way of breaking the jar, what exception we need to have for the jar to break? What seven? What reason? What purpose? What perspective? It's a whim. And when we see, for example, the exception came to Musa alayhi salam. We will study it uh, far. Now, Musa alayhi salam did the exception. Why? The exception, if you call, for example, Musa alayhi salam could have stayed in Egypt. He said, yeah, Allah, destroy Pharaoh here. But he didn't do it. He took his people, and he didn't take his people with his own whims. Alayhi salam. وَأَوْحَيْنَا إِلَى مُوسَى أَنْ أَسْرِ بِعِبَادِ Go, take them now. So he's following the command of Allah. So he took the seven. So he's in the protection of Allah. He's in the watching of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So his journey is watched by Allah. They walk and walk and walk and came they to a capacity, to their had to their boundaries. They cannot. So they came at the end of the what they come from the Sunnah Shari. From Akhda al Asbab. They put into implementation all their capacity. They cannot cross the sea and they cannot fight for us. So here we have all the condition. Al Asbabu we fulfilled and we understand Al Akhdu Al Asbab. So I say, did you put into you know implementation all your capacity? That's one condition. Said yes, Ya Allah. Can you do more? That's I am at the end. The Prophet Sallallahu you remember his khutbah when he was calling Allah in Badr. Was he were he calling Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as soon as he heard like Abu Sufyan uh, changed his route and Abu Jahl came and all the Quraysh came? He called only when the whole believer ready to fight with all their uniform of war, ready to give their life, and everything when he started, the Prophet is calling. But someone, you know, eating fresh food and, and then sitting and say they look at the jar, okay, you're gonna see my event. So this is more like showing off, it doesn't have any aspect. Any other question? Nam. Um, I just wanted um, to know you had you had uh, for the characteristics of the sunnah. Um, what was the third characteristics after the after the sunnah that is not under the time, but it's above the time? What was the characteristics after that one? Uh, the characteristics after that one is how to deal with it. So if it's above the time, so the way to deal with it is to have the action of sabr. So, you know that you have the yaqeen of it. So how can you deal with sunnah that is not here? We know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to fulfill His promise. The 
sunnah, the good news is coming. Should we fight it? Should we hasten it? Should we try to do anything for it to happen? Or be patient for it to come? So when you know the sunnah is coming, with no doubt, therefore the only action of worship that you need to train yourself on it is sabah. So this is how to deal with it. How to approach it. How to approach it, how to, to live with it. How to implement your belief in the sunnah. And then, when you get into the sabr, also including the sabr that you're not suburb for it to happen because it might not happen in your lifetime. Your sabr is for seeking the pleasure of Allah. Because Allah, He is going to have it in His time, not in your time. And with His choice, not with our choice. Uh, Shaq, uh, how do we know when we have to have the supper and wait to see that happens and when we have to act? You know, the supper is, is a state of a believer. A supper is not we say, now I have to have supper. It's already part of the worship of a believer. So the supper is not someone to hold on something that is like so bitter or something that is going to burn him. Actually, the Prophet Sallallahu he said, is going to come for my own time. The one who holding his deen is like he's holding on a core of fire. So the core of fire is really sabr. How can someone hold something that burn him? He need to be have like patience. So the whole time of a life of a believer in the sabr. Therefore the sabr, we need sabr when someone wants to pray. You need sabr to fast. You need sabr on your own children. You need sabr on your household. You need sabr in your work. So the sabr is not to face a difficulty. A sabr is a state of mind. It's a way of life. Uh, sure. What I mean is, you stated and clearly defined it what sabr is, I understand. But what I want to know is when to, to suffer. And suffer always comes with you as you stated. But example, you have a situation whereby um, you have to make a decision either to act now or to wait and not act. As you stated that sometimes you ask the goal of why the reason of why wait. If it is not qualifies to what you stated, then it is not a good summer because there is no reason to. Yes, it. yes. Now what I want to know is how to make that decision. How do I know? Tayyip, this is the introduction. And when we study it, the study is to study the sunnah, to position someone's self into the field where he is. Then he look at the sunnah, the sunnah is help him to plan. So the sunnah is not the existence of the sunnah decree on him to have some. In the understanding of the sunnah, who help him to get into the sunnah? Because understanding of the sunnah will tell him to have patience now or to act. So the understanding, the study of the sunnah, which is to study his environment, to study his situation, and to check where he is, where his position, and then he will act. The action will be sabr or will be something else. Depends on the sunnah or the understanding of the sunnah toward his, his situation at that time.